All right, everybody. Good evening. Dr. Charmi Patel here from Upper Cervical Chiropractic of Georgia. And thank you for tuning in into our workshop. Today, we're going to be discussing spinal hygiene. So what is spinal hygiene? Do you brush your teeth, floss, and visit your dentist once or twice each year? I sure hope you do. Oral hygiene has become part and partial of modern life, and we're all for it. Where tooth decay and gum disease were once common problems, most Americans now keep their teeth healthy and clean. And while some people still don't take care of their teeth, you'll rarely hear anyone defend infrequently of brushing, flossing, or dental appointments. Unfortunately, few people think the same way about their spines. Well, at least that's for now, right? Not surprisingly, 31 million Americans experience low back pain at any given time. And according to American Chiropractic Association, approximately 80% of the population will experience a back pain at some point in their lives. And many chiropractors are trying to change that status quo. However, with a concept called spinal hygiene. We've seen this successful in the dental profession. Dr. Alf Alfred, he saw this in his own in his own dentistry occupation. In 1906, he was pulling so many teeth in his dental office that he became determined to do something about it. He became convinced that tooth decay, also known as degeneration, could be prevented with proper oral hygiene. It was only in 1890, just 16 years prior, where Mr. William discovered that bacteria releases acid from the breakdown of sugar, and that causes tooth decay over time. The key here is that proper hygiene, so just the upkeep, prevents degeneration. We see this to be true in every area of the body. If you keep your teeth healthy, they last longer. If you keep your body healthy, it lasts longer. And if you keep your spine healthy, they last longer. This is no big surprise or nothing new, but you have been missing this key to health. No one has been teaching anyone to take care of their spines. So this is our goal. Oral hygiene has a huge public awareness. Spinal hygiene does not. 94% of people say they brush their teeth regularly. That awareness leads to 50% of people in the US visiting a dentist regularly. So our spinal health is a very small public awareness. It's fair to say that at least, well, less than 1% of people do spinal hygiene exercises at home. And that's compared to dentistry, 94% that are brushing their teeth. Because of lack of awareness, most stats show that less than 6% of the U.S. sees a chiropractor regularly. That's compared to 50% that see dentists. And then we wonder why 86% of people develop degeneration by the age of 50. Actually, we now see nearly 40% of 20 year olds recently have degeneration, also known as decay of their spine. So how will spinal hygiene improve your life and your family's lives forever? The bottom line is it helps you maintain the health of your spine and nervous system, which is a master system of your body. We know the nervous system controls everything. So if you maintain that, you will be healthier, happier, and vibrant versus if you have a degenerative spine that starts to break down. 
Spinal hygiene is a lifetime spinal awareness. So how do you start? If you just start doing one exercise per day of your spine, not only will you improve your results in the office, but you will begin to transform your spinal health. And if you will help me share this message with your friends and family and coworkers, together we can make a huge difference in the health of our own community. So finally, something we could all agree on. So how do we implement spinal hygiene into our daily routine? Let's, let's look at the foundational principles of healthy spine and the nervous system. So this is what the spine needs to stay healthy. Once we know that these, are, these things are there, we can start to do exercise and keep our spine healthy, if that makes sense. So what we need to do first is make sure that one, the spine should be in a certain alignment. Two, the spine should move through a full range of motion in each direction. And three, the muscles around the spine should be strong and healthy. And this is the key to spinal hygiene. And a lack of any of these three compartments or these three statements is a part of the subluxation complex. So as chiropractors, we adjust the subluxation and then you go home to do the exercise to maintain a healthy spine. And we see that in dentistry again, a dentist will clean your teeth and then you have to go home to brush your teeth two, two times a day. Spinal hygiene exercises maintain health and prevent the breakdown of the spine. But it is important to know that these exercises are not the treatment. Spinal alignment, range of motion and strength should be maintained for a lifetime. So what are spinal hygiene exercises? There are literally thousands of exercises you can do that will be beneficial to the spine. These include stretching, walking, jogging, riding a bike, and etc. I will also go over those at the end of the presentation. Remember though, our goal here is to manage those three things though. Spinal alignment, spinal range of motion, and spinal strength. And you, I know you don't have hours to do these things. So we're gonna, we wanna make sure you can do these that are gonna be easy for you to incorporate in your daily lives. So just some education, once again, this is the front view. Let's talk about curves for a second. In the front, you want to be straight. You can see on the left, we have a good spine versus the right spine. On the side, we want natural, smooth, and fluid curves. Not too much or not too little. You have a good curve on the left and then the bad curve on the right. So spinal molding. This helps hold our lateral curves between chiropractic adjustments. This also keeps the disc healthy and the disc needs, needs those natural curves to keep the pressure off of those disc following and those nerves. So the disc is a very, very important just to maintain healthy. The motion of the spine give the gel material the disc that is, a lower viscosity. The lack of those motion gives the gel material a higher viscosity. So therefore you feel loose after you exercise and you feel really, really tight after a long car drive. Well, the spinal molding helps you maintain lateral curves by taking advantage of these properties in the disc. For this reason, spinal molding is recommended as a hygiene exercise to be done right before you go to bed. The spine is typically looser at the end of the day. So spinal molding exercise. A rule for spinal molding, the spine should be moved through a full range of motion in each direction. You should sit at the edge of your bed or your chair 
And let me see if I could, let me see if I could turn my, yes. So if you could see me, you would sit at the edge of a chair. You would put your, rise your shoulders like this and to nine degrees and bend your elbow, elbows and put your knuckles towards each other. And then slowly you would twist back and forth 20, 10 to 25 times just like this in the lumbar spine. The second exercise is to take two foam rollers. You will place one under the neck and one at the lower back of your lumbar spine. This placing those two for about five to 10, 20 minutes will help you keep those natural curves. Now in the beginning, this is gonna be super uncomfortable. So we start with five and then we work our well selves up to 20. So with regular chiropractic visits, this exercise will help maintain your proper curves in your spine. And a tip, do not do this on the floor. This will hurt your back. However, we want you to do it on smooth surfaces like your bed. So the spine. We are now going to discuss range of motion. Movement of the spine is life to the body. Roger Spears stated, movement of the joints of the spine is analogous to a windmill generating electricity to run a power plant. Therefore, the more mechanical, dis mechanically distorted a person becomes, the less energy there is healing, metabolizing, and thinking. That's very powerful. So when we, when we are getting your spine moving and keeping your spine moving, and you're doing these exercises on a daily basis, you're literally adding energy to your daily life, which helps with healing, metabolism, and thinking. Now the disc must have movement to maintain health and prevent degeneration. This is our goal. Most blood flow to the disc is gone by the age of puberty. After puberty, the only way the disc can receive nutrients is through imbibition. Imbibition refers to the exchange of fluids during movement. Movement creates a pumping and action in the disc. This pump brings natural nutrients such as oxygen and glucose. And this also helps expel those toxins such as carbon dioxide. A misalignment and lack of motion are the number one cause of degeneration of the spine. Misalignment also causes the bone remodeling due to abnormal loading of pressure, which leads to calcification. This is also known as bone spurs. So the spine moves in three planes of motion. So we have, um, so we have flexion and extension. So flexions this way, extensions backwards. We have lateral bending, both sides, and we have rotations, both sides. It's important to stretch each area of the spine and all these range of motions for 10 seconds each. So for the neck, we want to do neck extensions for 10 seconds. And then we wanna do neck flexion for 10 seconds. Then we want to do 10 seconds with lateral bending, 10 seconds for the other side of lateral bending, 10 seconds for rotation, and then 10 seconds for the opposite side rotation. And then we would do that once again for our lower back. Forward, backward, lateral bend, both sides, full rotation at the lumbars on both sides, all for 10 seconds. Spinal range of motion can be done any time of the day. You can also actually do this multiple times throughout the day. If you're working at your desk, you're driving for long hours, and you're on your feet all day, this should be done every three hours at least. The most effective time also 
to move and you feel comfortable is going to be in the morning. This is when the spine is usually at its tightest because of being inactive for so many hours of us sleeping. So why is spinal hygiene so powerful? We only get one spine, so we have to take care of it. We must stop spinal degeneration. And this is why it's so powerful. We, we can eliminate or at least reduce the devastating effects of spinal degeneration. Another reason why lifetime spinal wellness is so critical. Chiropractic adjustments correct misalignment and activate the nervous system. The spinal molding helps maintain that alignment of the spinal natural curves and help hold those adjustments longer. And the spinal range of motion helps to maintain the motion of the spine, encouraging immobition, which is that natural pumping, and, the, and improve the strength of the spine with the muscles. So what, your, what an ideal spinal hygiene looks like is regular chiropractic adjustments or checkups. And every morning you should do spinal range of motion exercises. Those are the ones that we just went over for 10 seconds, you go in each motion, flexion, extension, lateral bending both sides, as well as rotation on both sides. And that's in the cervical or the neck area and the back, which is your lumbar area. You must do every night spinal molding exercises. And then four to seven times per week is a wobble board and band, the band exercise. So I'm gonna go over those right now. This workshop is not to sell anything, but we do like to make things easier for you at home. So we have a spinal hygiene kit at our office. So you don't have to go out and buy all these little crazy things that we discussed, but this kit, we will have um, here, and plus there's a booklet a lot of, with a lot more exercises. Inside, you will get a wobble disc. So we're gonna open up. So you'll get a wobble disc. It looks like this. This wobble disc is a great spinal hygiene exercise to promote that pumping of the disc, that hydrating of the motion in your spine. Of, and you will place this disc, you will place this at, on the chair and you, so you sit on it and you will get a chair with um, arms on it because we wanna make sure that you have stability just in case. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna do exactly the same moments we, movements we discussed in our spinal range of motion stretches. You wanna go forward, backward. This is just gonna be for 10 times back and forth on this. Then you're going to do the exact same thing. You're gonna um, laterally bend both sides. To even actually make it better, you could do a hula hoop. So you're gonna do 10 times as a hula hoop this way to the right. And then the other 10 times, you're gonna do the hula hoop on the opposite side, creating motion in that spine. And then you're also gonna do, um, the lateral bending, which is going to be back and forth, back and forth. So you have all three range of motions for the lumbar spine at, for this. We also have the spinal molding. And this is what you use for the rollers. You could also use two towels and put one under your neck and one under your back. This will keep the natural curves of the neck and lower back. We want this to be about five centimeters of diameter because that's how thick from the floor to how the spine needs to be off. And then another one is you will have a band with this as well. The band is a resistance band you will put around the head. And then what you would do is put your hands up at 90 degrees, elbows bent, and you would basically try to create a double chin. You're gonna retract your chin. You're gonna go like this for 10 seconds and stretch all those muscles in the back of your neck and release for five seconds. You will keep doing that five times. Now remember, these are the exercises you, you, you do four to seven times a day or at night. You will also get a travel 
um, bag with this that looks like this. And of course, you would get a, a booklet with all the exercises you could do at home. Now, they go for $150. However, if you call our office and you give the girls a code spinal hygiene, you could get it for 25% off. So just like you brush your teeth every night, make sure to make sure your teeth don't really rot and get decayed. You have to make sure your spinal hygiene exercise you do as well three to four times a week to prevent decay and help you hold those alignments. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Take care of your spine. Once again, you only have one. Don't forget to tune in next month at our next workshop on allergies. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Remember, once again, don't, take, don't forget to take care of your spine.